He said, we saw a big hand on one of your, on your side and a big hand on the other side. And we saw light on your head. So the commander assumed that this is some form of magic rituals or something. No, I was saying my prayers. But obviously, he himself did not see this. It's the commander who saw this. From then onwards, he started to be pleasant and started asking him about your prayers and your Christianity. He kept quizzing. Well, years later, he finished his cons conscription and went back to his village. And years later, there was a knock at his door. And his commander came to him and he said, uh, I want you to know that I have become a Christian. Obviously, it wasn't just that incident, but he did his own research, looked into things. But the man saw something visibly in front of his eyes that he could not ignore. The Holy Spirit worked with this man and saved him and helped him. And the Holy Spirit worked with the commander. You could easily shut your heart, but the Holy Spirit helps when you, when you inquire, when you study. The Holy Spirit helps you open your heart and you receive the message. The Holy Spirit is the helper. And the helper, the Lord Jesus used the term, the helper, the Holy Spirit. When he comes, he will teach you everything and remind you everything I have told you. Faith. Well, the Holy Spirit strengthens our faith. And I like this story. A young man who is in university and was going back home next week. And he was talking to the priest. And he said to him, the priest was telling him, trust God, have faith. He said, well, to be honest with you, I have problem trusting anybody. Even my closest family member, I cannot trust anybody. So if I can't trust my mom and dad, how can I trust God? So that was a good answer the priest gave. He said to him, so you booked your ticket? He said, no, well, next week when I take the train to go home, I'll go to the uh, ticket office and I'll book my ticket. Do you know the woman or the man who is behind the glass window? No. Have you ever seen her before? No. But you trust her, yes? Yes, I do trust her. And she gives you the ticket, yes? I do. Right. And then what do you do when you, take, when you do the ticket? I bought the train. Have you ever seen a driver? <laughs> Have we ever seen a driver of the train? We don't. He's hiding somewhere inside him. Do you trust him? Well, actually, I do. do you, but you haven't seen him. Yes, I haven't seen him, but I trust him. Are you sure he will take you home, not anywhere else? Right. The point is, we do in our day-to-day -day life trust a lot of people who we don't know and we've never met. I'm always reminded, has this church built itself? No. Builders built it. The thousands of cars we see on the M4 going up and down, have they made themselves? No. They were all made in factories. The, the heaven and the earth, have they made themselves? No. It cannot be. It cannot be. There is a creator. And this creator, he created heaven and earth, happened to have personal interest in us. And he loved us. And he came to save us. Hello, Amen. To them. So it is because because of this personal relationship that we trust the Lord. That's what the priest is saying. The Holy Spirit stands in our face, he says. Yeah. Um, very important. I mean, it is also normal to have moments of doubt in our spiritual life. It is not surprising to have moments of doubt or even phases of doubt. Remember your psalms, remember your prayers, remember the holy mysteries of the church, remember the communion. All these things are aids to your faith. And above all, ask the Holy Spirit to strengthen our faith. And the Holy Spirit helps us for repentance. Now, our Buddha Thomas told this story in, in, uh, on Good Friday. But this priest, has anybody seen his photo before? Do you know who he is? Yeah, yes, a lot. You know, because you came recently from Egypt. <laughs> he, was, he was a wonderful man. A wonderful man. Um, who is 
a priest. Uh, it has a story, it has a long story, an amazing story. <coughs> but he served the last 40 <coughs> years of his life in, in America. Uh, but he, when he was in Egypt, he worked in Alexandria, <coughs> Serbia, yeah. Alexandria. Sorry, what? Okay. Repentance, yeah. Well, yeah. I'm going to talk about repentance. <coughs> um, the story is about a young man <coughs> who worked in Cairo, and while in Cairo, he went to church regularly, he worshipped regularly, and then he was asked to transfer his job to Alexandria. Well, a new city, uh, a big, busy city, got in company with people who are not very good. Uh, oh, And he followed them. Whatever his friends did, he copied them. He, married, he carried on doing what they did. Several months, and then he had a picture of the Lord Jesus in his flat. He was annoyed with himself, but he couldn't stop uh, mixing with the wrong people and doing all the wrongs they are doing. He couldn't stop. So he looked at Jesus and he said, I really hate what I'm doing. But I can't stop it. So, if you want me to stop, you do something about it. That's how we pray. So, he put the picture in front of him. I'm, I'm no good. I really want to be good, but I can't. So, do something about it. Just create a, a circumstance whereby I could change. That was he. Abu Lewis in the rooms was doing his rounds. He said, I actually did have the full address, the road, the floor, number of the floor, and the number of the flat. And he's a bright man. He used to be a lecturer in the West. So he was sure he was doing the right, going to the right place. So it was a third floor. It was a flat number nine. Yes, third floor and number nine. Knocked at the door, not the people he was expecting. He quickly realized that though the floor was the right floor and the flat was the right number, the road was the wrong road. Why was it the wrong road? <laughs> there was a reason. There was a reason. So the man, that man, opened the door and there was a shock on his face. Last night he was saying to Jesus, do something about it. And here is a priest coming. So impulsively, the first thing he said, who sent you to me? He said, Nobody said to me, I, I, just, I just want to see you. And then he peeped through the door and found the, the picture of Jesus. I see you are a Christian. Let me in. I will pray for you. I wouldn't let you in, but who sent you? The, his main question was, is it, it's too much of a coincidence that I prayed last night and the priest knocked at my door next day. Eventually, he got in and uh, Abuna explained why, why he came and it was really a mistake, but it wasn't a mistake. Is there anything called chance or is it the work of the Holy Spirit? It is really the work of the Holy Spirit. And Abuna mentioned that he confessed, he said everything and he had the lovely prayers and he went back to church and started praying. There was something special about this man. Uh, it seemed that he was able to see visions while in the mass. And, but the vision stopped. When he went back, when he started back to the church again, nothing happened for a while. And then Abuna saw him crying, weeping bitterly. He said, come on, things are right now. Why are you so upset? What happened really, he started seeing these visions again. I'm not saying that everybody will see visions, but maybe, maybe some of us, I don't, I don't know. But the Holy Spirit leads us to repentance. It is true sometimes to say, I really want to stop doing such and such, but I can't. It's fine. It's fine. God, God knows that. And God, in His mercy, will create the circumstances. And we ask the Holy Spirit to, to help us. He is the helper to help us to repent. And if we don't repent, what happens? 
Have you seen this man before? <laughs> no. <laughs> You've never seen him before. It is true, whether men and women in public life or ordinary people, there will be a sin. And he, I mean, just because he's famous does not mean that he's good. In fact, he's not good. <laughs> um, and uh, recently there was an investigation by the Privileged Committee and uh, there was a damning report. And the report was so damning that when it was given to Mr. Boris Johnson, he decided to uh, resign before, uh, before his, to what, to, to, to uh, before, he, before he's pushed, he decided to fall on his sword, brother, and he resigned. He wasn't fall yeah. on his sword, but yeah. he took a job by the Daily Mail, which yeah. pays him more right. than he earned as So he's not destroyed. No, he's <laughs> earning more money as a columnist for the Daily Mail yeah. than I, he did as prime minister. Yeah. Agree, but uh, there was somebody quite high up in the Privileged Committee uh, giving an interview, and his words were, this man lied and lied, and convinced himself Daily. that he was telling the truth, and then he, this man, privileged committee man said, well, do you think he would come back to public life? I wish he never comes back to his public life. What I'm trying to say here is that we repent because we want to please the Lord. But we repent because if we don't repent, the punishment of the world is quite severe. And uh, the punishment of Mr. I agree, he probably, he's not going to starve. He will make a lot of money. Yeah. But for somebody to fall spectacularly, into uh, from from uh, he, he was he was a darling of the media for a while, yeah. but he's no more. Everybody. Like, yeah. The the, the other one I want to talk about is less well known. Again, it's the same thing. When there is a sin, it could lead into destruction. It really can lead them. So again, we repent because we not, we want to please the Lord who saved us and loved us, but we also we repent. Because if we don't repent, punishment will be severe. And this is what happened with this man. Not a well-known man, but he is very well-known in his own circles. He is the, uh, the uh, CBI former, former president, and he is the chairman of Tesco's. But he kept sinning. And 74 years of age. Come on, respect your age. Respect your name. You don't, you don't need to keep missing the bell. It was a sexual sin, but he never stopped. Uh, again, the punishment was severe. Uh, Tesco's released a statement. This man has become a liability to us. The reputation of Tesco's is being marred by the behavior of our chairman. He is to stand down with immediate effect. Our Lord is merciful, and when we, when we repent, we are pardoned. But the world is not so merciful. When things get in the way of the reputation of a big company, you are damned. We are damned. And, uh, and he is also to step down from the CBI on the 16th of June, so two days ago. That was his last working day. He was given his, is it P45 or P60 or whatever? Off you go. We don't want you anymore. And let us remember this. You will grow up in your careers, you will do very well. But do remember that a persistence of a sin, I'm talking to myself, and maybe to all of us, a persistence of a sin can be very harshly punished by the world. Therefore, we have to be very careful. But let us also repent for the positive reason. We don't want to grieve the spirit. And the Holy Spirit give us wisdom. And I came across this story and I thought it's very sweet. How do you do the right thing at the right time? Imagine uh, a, a respectable church like us. Everybody is nicely dressed. Everybody's got uh, shoes on their feet. And uh, the churches in, church in America can be very full. So this young man, uh, quite a character, he decided to walk into the church barefooted, with jeans half down his, uh, his, uh, his legs, with a hat, and walked around down the church. And obviously everybody was looking at him. What on earth is he? Can't, can't he? can't he have the right dress code or something? What's he doing? 
So he walks all the way down, all the way down, look right, look left, the pews are all full. So he decided to sit in front of the pulpit, what we call in our church the Mangalaya. So well, the preacher is about to, to, uh, to uh, give a sermon. So I might as well squat on the floor and uh, look up and wait for him to say whatever he's going to say. People were feeling uncomfortable, but nobody volunteered to say anything. Let us say that this man was a deacon, an old man walking with a stick. And he was standing right at the back of the church. And he started walking down the aisle, started walking down the aisle. And all the eyes were on him. Now what's he going to do? Is he going to tell this young man off? Is he going to uh, shout at him? What's he going to do? So he walked all the way down to him. Remember that when you get my age, you start having arthritis. And that's why he's walking with a stick. So uh, with great difficulty, he bent down, squatted, and sat himself next to the young man. And then whispered in his ears, I don't want you to be on your own, so I decided to come and sit next to you. What do you call that? Wisdom? I would say it's first class wisdom. Beautiful behavior. And the preacher was at the uh, pulpit, the Mangalaya, and then he said, actually I was about to give a sermon, but before your eyes, you have seen a sermon already. So I no longer need to say anything. And the end of the sermon is that. You, you've seen your sermon already. How do you say things at the right time, in the right way, so that it is well received? Not easy. Not easy. And the Lord Jesus said, when you are in a, tri in a tricky situation, ask for the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will teach you what to say. This may be an interview, maybe an awkward situation with a manager, maybe whatever, allegation, whatever, whatever. A quick prayer, a quick prayer to the Holy Spirit, asking for guidance and the Lord uh, will guide on what to say. Very funny story. Uh, the, the Abuna Tadros Yahu, do you know Abuna Tadros Yahu? Abuna Tadros Yahu told this story. He gave the uh, advice to somebody, and after a week later, uh, the young man came back to him and he said, thank you very much, Abuna. What you said was very, very useful. He said, so what did you do? He said, I did such and such and such. It transpired that what he actually heard from Abuna was completely different from what Abuna said. But what he said worked. It doesn't matter who says what, but the Holy Spirit worked somehow and put certain conviction in his heart, and it worked. It worked not because the Buddha said the right thing. It worked because the Holy Spirit put in his heart what needs to be said. Where is the Holy Spirit to guide us? Indeed, in every situation, in every situation, how can we do the right thing at the right time? Please, Holy Spirit, guide us. Have you seen this picture? What's this picture? Who's this one? And who is this one? Uh, never before a Coptic priest attended this uh, uh, amazing St. Peter Square, and you can see thousands of people. But it wasn't about the thousands of people. Both Pope uh, Cardinals and Pope Francis used the word love. Basically saying, it is love that's bringing us together. And they both said, it is the Holy Spirit. They both used the same term. It is the Holy Spirit that brought us together. And then he enlarged on it. Pope Tarvus enlarged on it. He said, yes, we will, re we will read history. Yes, we will discuss dogma. And yes, we will pray. And prayers is able to achieve miracles. This was a very historical moment. How big? What's the population of the Copts in the world? Give a figure. Any idea? How many of us? 25 million. What is the population of the Catholic Church? 1,500 million. The, the ratio is almost uh, 1 to 100. Um, and some popes, of course, have gotten to their heads, and uh, the, the Catholic popes, and, and first, 
first among equals. That was the term given by the uh, church. But it is, it is beautiful that the head of the Catholic Church, uh, who is a lot older than Pope Patrus, he is 84 or 85, would bend down and touch the cross and kiss the cross of, of Pope Patrus. Beautiful, lovely gesture. Who taught him to do that? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit taught him this is the right thing to do. Humility. The Holy Spirit teaches us how, uh, how to be humble, how to, um, uh, to behave in a, in, a, in a humble way. And what present did Pope Tawadros give to Pope Francis? Any idea? What did he do? He was an icon. Icon, yes, but something else very important. The martyrs. When the martyrs, when the 21 martyrs were martyred in Libya, they tied them with ropes. These ropes were found intact. So some of the ropes that the martyrs were tied, were their hand tied, he presented them as a present to Pope Francis. This has got very important meaning. If the churches are going to get closer, we immediately identify, the Catholic Church have said, they are wonderful people. We want them in the Catholic Church. We're going to build an altar in the Catholic Church for the names of the 21 martyrs. Who, who's, who will have a hard heart? Who, who is a hard-hearted Christian who would say, we, we don't, they belong to a different church, we don't want them. Their love for the Lord radiates to all churches, and that's what happened. And what will bring the churches together is the love of the martyrs. And theology will be discussed, and history will be discussed, but it is the love that brings people together. I thought this is a beautiful picture. I'll talk about myself. This is an amazing story that happened in the marathon just recently. Okay? The rugby player, right? The rugby player? The rugby player, about. yeah, yeah. Uh, well, this is typical rugby player, isn't it? Rugby people are are big and broad, aggressive, and all that. These two trained leads rugby club together for 15 years. The real name of this is Kevin. Let us call him John. Let's call him John. You will find the story on the, uh, on the internet. So Kevin and John were very fond of each other, great friends, great pals, we would say. For 15 years, they trained the same club. When they retired, it seemed that Kevin carried on becoming the national coach of rugby. And John developed motor neuron disease. Motor neuron disease is a horrible uh, Professor Hawkins, who's somebody who, who had the motor neuron disease, and this chap, John. Basically, the muscles atrophy, and you end up in a wheelchair. You haven't even got the muscle strength to put your head up. Notice that head is tilted. I'm talking about myself. They both decided to run the marathon together. 26 miles and Kevin pushing John all the way. But the last few hundred yards were different. This is what happened. The last few hundred yards, Kevin held John and walked with him till he finished the finishing line. What's that got to do with Christianity? Well, I totally helped this man. That's what it is. He could not help himself. He has to be carried. He lost his ability to move. Certain times of your life, and in my life, I felt like this. Honestly, it was not an exaggeration. I felt totally helpless. I can name the days. Something happened in 2014, something happened in 2017, 18, and something happened in 2019. As it just happened, something to do with my family, something to do with health, and something to do with work. And you are in a situation, in a terrible situation. And you have no means of influencing events whatsoever. Whatsoever. It is totally beyond you. And what do you do? 
you, you have not got tricks anymore. It, it's gone out of your hands. And the right thing to do is to pray. I will mention the health issue. So it was a question. Do I have cancer or I don't have cancer? So uh, they put you under an anesthetic and uh, you, have a, you go through an MRI machine and they take a biopsy from you. By nature, I am a warrior. I do worry. But something happened to me. I felt very much at peace. And this pain, and this peace, 100% was not from me. Because I would not normally be at peace at such circumstances. And I was on the anesthetic table, and the anesthetist looked at me, and she saw me half smiling. So before she put the injection in, she said, is this a true smile, or are you faking it? I said, it is a true smile. And I really felt at peace. And then the needle went in, and within seconds, you go. How I was at peace at that particular moment, I don't know. Normally, I wouldn't. If you ask me six months before, I would say, the chances are I'll be very upset and worried. But I wasn't. I wasn't. There come a time when the love of the Father, the grace of the Son, and the power of the Holy Spirit come down and say, well, this is my son. I will look after him. And hence the peace. And this young man is a peace. <laughs> yeah. So, so actually, we should be, sweet, hello. Uh, so we should be at peace ourselves because when, I hope and pray, you don't go through terrible events. But when terrible events happen, don't worry. The, the Holy Spirit, the power of the Lord, will be with us because that's His promise. All we can do is to pray. That's all. That's why get ready with your sons. Learn your sons. Because they really, honestly, they come very handy when you are in trouble. And you wouldn't have an Agbeya handy unless you have it on your telephone. So memorize it. Memorize it. Be very helpful. But at times, when, when you are really desperate, help is from above. The Psalms are full of this. The helper? Oh, I, I really felt carried. I really felt carried uh, through, by the way. Who's going to read this? Uh, I think this is the last uh, slide. Who, somebody to read this slide, please? It's, uh, from here, in the same way. Yeah. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us through world wordless prayer. Yes, at the very, at the very, very tense moment, you don't have to have a well set up litany of prayers. Just shout, just shout, and ask for help. That's enough. Groans, yes, wordless groans. That's fine. That's that's, that's okay. Yeah. Right. Right, thank you. Right. How much time do we have? 20 minutes? Right. Can we divide into, there is enough of us to make three groups. And we'll have some sheets to, to initiate some discussion based on what we've talk, spoken about. Tina, Tina will, uh, will organize this. <laughs> right. And we've got plenty of space, so can a group 